Okay. All right, guys, welcome. I, it's Miss Lopez. I'm here to read um, definitely my favorite author, um, but this is also one of, she has two of my favorite books that she's written. Um, I love all her books, but this is my second favorite book. Um, it's called The Junkyard um, Wonders. And it's by Patricia Polacco. Let me wait for someone to jump on. Remember, if you're here, put a little um, thumbs up, a little emoji. It's Friday. You guys have been working all week. Thank you, thank you. You guys have done such a good job of getting used to this online learning. I know it hasn't been easy between Google Classrooms and Pearson and how to submit paperwork, um, your assignments. Not easy, it's never easy, but you guys have really worked through it, so I'm super proud of you. All right, let's see. Oh, I see a little thumbs up. Someone's out there, yay, someone's out there. Hi, tell me who's out there. All right, so I am going to read half of this book today, and then I will read the other half on Monday, because as you know, some of Patricia's books are a little bit longer, um, but I love, love, love that these are the stories of her life. So she talks about when she was a little girl and what it was like for her in school and what her family was like having um, immigrated here to the United States. Um, but she always, a lot of her books are about like her favorite teachers because she's always talked about how she really struggled um, as a learner. And then as she got older, they realized that she was dyslexic. But she talks now about how she overcame all of that to really become um, a, a well-published, um, famous, um, author and illustrator and she um, came to our school a couple of years ago and it was so exciting to meet her uh, and talk to her about just the things, her life, um, the for her stories. She got to sign most of my books so I was super, super excited about that. Um, all right, so we will get started. So and there's her picture. Hi, there's her signature right there. So exciting, made me so happy. There it is, her signature. All right, let's get started. The Junkyard Wanderers. My heart sang as I walked to school with all of the kids on my grandma's block on the first day of school. My mother and father had decided that I could stay just for one year. There, there with my father and grandma in Michigan. In my old school in California, the kids all knew that I had just learned to read, that I used to be dumb. Everyone knew that I was always in special classes. Here, no one knew. No one would tease me. Already, I had a new friend, Kay. But when I got to the front steps of the school, all of the neighborhood kids ran off to their classes. And when I saw Kay and waved to her, she didn't wave back. Hmm. Um, I just stood there not knowing where to go. And when I showed two strange girls my class card, they gave me funny looks on their faces. Or they got funny looks on their faces. You're in Mrs. Peterson's class, they said. Upstairs, room 206. So there she is, new school. And guys, that's hard to be at a new school and not to really know anybody. Room 206, I found it. In the classroom, a gawky boy I had never seen before yelled out, hey, the name's Tom, not spelled T-O-M, but T-H-O-M. Sit here next to me. He had huge dark rimmed glasses that magnified his eyes. I sat down and looked around. Everyone seemed really different in one way or another. I couldn't put my finger on it. Suddenly, everyone snapped to attention. Our teacher was standing in the doorway. 
short and stout. She seems a little scary, um, brisk, but her eyes, her eyes were friendly. I was sure of that. She walked up to the podium of the front of the room and slammed an enormous dictionary on the top of it. Then she adjusted her glasses and without saying hello or how are you, she started reading in this no-nonsense voice. The definition of genius, she began. So there's their teacher. All the kids in her class. She's a little nervous because again, this is her first day of school. Think back to your first day of school this year. Um, or even one of your first days of schools in the past. How did it make you feel? Hmm. Were you scared? Were you a little nervous? Genius is neither learned nor acquired. It is knowing without experience. It is risking without fear of failure. It is perception without touch. It is understanding without research. It is certainty without proof. It's the ability without practice. It is invention without limitations. It is imagination without boundaries. It is creativity without constraints. It is extraordinary intelligence. Then she took a deep breath and slammed the book shut so hard it sounded like a gunshot. Welcome to the junkyard. I am your teacher, Mrs. Peterson. She started walking around the room looking at each of us. I want you all to write the definition on the blackboard. Post it on your mirrors. Look at it every Monday. Memorize it. The definition describes every one of you. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So she just told everyone in her class that there's a, they're a genius. No matter what, the, it, they haven't even started learning anything, but she knows each one of them is a genius. And she told them, take that definition, put it in your, in your room, put it somewhere that you can see it so that you always remember, you're a genius. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to tell the teachers to start their year next year that way. Cause that's amazing. Gives me goosebumps, I love it. So there she is and look at them all looking at her with like, oh, wow, she thinks we're geniuses. At recess that day, I couldn't wait to ask Tom, why is our class called the junkyard? Because we are, mm, didn't you notice all of us are? different. You know, odd, like stuck in the junkyard. He turned toward the playground. See that super tall kid over there? That's Jody Beach. He's got some disease that makes him grow too fast. He's my bodyguard. No one picks on me when he's around. He smiled. Over there, that kid. That's Gibby McDonald. He's our, um, our turrets. There's Stuart Bean. He has diabetes. Me? Well, I have trouble seeing. They call me Sissy Boy because even so, I love ballet. It's my life. I like ballet too. At least I did in California. I knew there was something about you I liked, Tom said. I felt I had found a soulmate in Tom, and since he thought Jody was nifty, so did I. But it only helped a little. So interesting. There's all her friends at recess, and she's learning a little bit about them, that they're all different. Guys, is it okay to be different? Think back to your class right now. Think to Miss Gomez's class. Think to uh, Miss Villapondo's class. Think to Miss Lopez's class. Think to Mr. Kyle's class. Think to Miss Clark's class. Mr. Davis's class. Think about all the kids in your class. Are they all different? And is different okay? Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments. When I got home that night, I told Dad and Grandma about my day. 
I tried to be brave and not let them know how sad I really was. But just as Dad was tucking me in at bedtime, I finally burst into tears. Oh, Daddy, I've been put in a special class again. It's called the junkyard. Junkyard? What junkyard? My dad asked. That's what everybody calls our class. Darling, said my dad, you are not a quitter. Stick it out for a month. If this class doesn't get better, I promise I'll send you back to California. I didn't tell him that when I tried to sit with Kay and her friends at lunch, she said that junkyard kids couldn't sit at their table. Oh my goodness. So at the beginning she said she met a new friend named Kay. So is that really true? Is Kay her friend? Think about that. What kind of characteristics should a true friend have? Should they be mean to you? Should they say you can't sit with them? Is that really a true friend? What are some true friend characteristics? I don't think it's that one. So I want you to put in the comments. Tell me what you think. What's a good friend characteristic? How should they be? How do you know they're really your friend? Should they stick up for you? I know I stick up for my friends. The next day, Miss Peterson arrived in class with a basket full of small glass bottles. Today, she said, we are going to determine your tribes. She gave each of us a vial. Tip some of the liquid on your wrist. Hmm. Smell. Some of you smell like lemons. Some cinnamon. Some almonds. Now, can you smell someone who has the same scent as you? They will be part of your tribe for the year. Oh, wow. I sniffed my own wrist. Vanilla. Oh, I love the smell of vanilla. I would be a vanilla kid. Um, we all strolled around the classroom, sniffing each other's wrist. And that sound like a fun activity? Um, I sniffed a boy's wrist who was wearing a homespun shirt, and he sniffed mine. Vanilla, we both said. My name's Gilbert McDonald. Call me Gibby. Then the two of us fanned out. I found a little girl who smelled like vanilla. Looks like you are in my tribe, I chirped. She just smiled, but she didn't answer me. Gibby came over with Tom. Vanilla, he announced. My bodyguard, bodyguard Jody is too. So Tom, Gibby, Jody, and I were a tribe. I asked the shy girl her name. She wrote it down on a piece of paper, Ravana Salts. Tom told me later that she hadn't spoken as long as he'd known her. Oh, it says love and caring. Yes, those are great characteristics for a friend, to be loving and caring, not mean, right? Those aren't true friends. But look, I love that activity. How they became a tribe. They walked around and they smelled each other's wrists. That's another great activity that we should try next year, don't you think? Someone better write that down and let their teachers know. This is a great activity. Miss Polacco told us in her story. And Miss Lopez read it to us and she loved it too. <laughs> From then on, whenever there was a project to be done, Mrs. Peterson had the tribes work together. Raven never talked, but she was a whiz at math. Gibby had ticks and shouted for no reason, sometimes, but his father was a professor of engineering and Gibby loved to build things. Boy, was he smart. Joey loved reading everything, particularly poetry. He even wrote poems of his own. Tom made all of us laugh. He was so clever. Me, of course, I could draw. So I became the official journal keeper. The borders were filled with my drawings. It wasn't long before Tom, Jody, Gibby, Raven, and I were best friends. We did almost everything together, even after school. We visited Jody, who lived out on a farm east of town. His mother decorated cakes, 
and she was working on the tallest wedding cake I had ever seen. We all helped her. So how do you think so far she's changed? Because remember, after that first night, she went home and she cried to dad. And she was like, I don't have any friends. They call my class the junkyard. How do you think she's feeling? Do you think she's changed? Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Rakoya. Hi, Amaria. Do you think her, her attitude has changed? Do you think it's gotten a little bit better for her? What do you think? Do you see why I love this book yet? <laughs> One night, Gibby's dad set up a telescope in his back field and invited the whole class over to look. We could see Saturn with our naked eyes. But with the telescope, we could see Saturn's rings. We never did go to Raven's house. She lived in a foster home. And I don't think she was too happy there. But her foster mother let her paint beautiful designs on silk from an old World War II parachute, which she brought to school to show us. My dad arranged for the whole class to go to our neighbor's farm and have a hayride that took us way off into the fields. Wow. So not only are they a class, but their families are joining in and getting them to do things together. How many of you have families in your neighborhood that you guys get together and you do things together? Almost like a little tribe. I know Miss um, Miss Leal's on there, and I know her kiddos get a, get together with a couple of families and do stuff together, which is always important. I know here in my neighborhood, I've got a couple of families that we do that too. We used to have a family, the Martinez's, that we were together all the time, and then they moved, and we were very sad. So we don't get to see them as much as we did. We used to, but we see them every other time. Um, and we always have a good time and our kids always have a good time. So we hope that you have some families that are part of your tribe as well. So our class was special, all right? The junkyard kids were pretty amazing to begin with. And Mrs. Peterson showed us how to shine. She even helped us make badges that said, the junkyard wanderers. So you can be proud of who you are, she said. That day, we got the badges. This mean boy came running up to us. Weirdos. Um, now you even wear dumbbell pins. A boy named Barton Poole grabbed the pin off my shirt. I started to cry. But then Tom and Giddy ran at Barton and his friends. Right, one of his friends. Now Twinkle Toes and da 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 the jerk are following us around and going to hurt us. We are so scared. Right, um, just about then, Jody, big, wonderful Jody, appeared from nowhere. The mean boy sure backed off. Someday, you aren't gonna have this freak to guard you, Barton snarled as he stalked away. So look at this. Here are their badges. You can see the little badges right, horrible sense of directionality right there that they had made to show how unique and individual they walk, they are and how proud they were to be a part of their class. But some mean old rude kid came in and made it awful. That's awful, I hate that. So I think it's always important to remember that we're all different, but it's an okay thing to be different. It's a good thing to be different, right? So it says I have seven comments, but it's not letting me scroll down to see more comments. So I, I hope I'm not missing anyone. I hate to be missing someone. Oh, what's going on? I apologize. I don't know why it's not letting me see other comments. But if you're out there, hi. I hope you're loving our book. So luckily they had a good friend. Um, help protect them from those mean bullies. That day, Mrs. Peterson could see that we were badly shaken. 
Gibby finally spoke up. Mrs. Peterson, he said, we're all junkyard kids. Even though you try to make us feel better about it, we're throwaways, junk, and everyone knows it. Oh, my dear. That's where you were wrong, she said. Every one of you is my wonder. Don't you realize what a junkyard really is? A place for things that nobody wants, Jody answered. Oh, it's a place full of wondrous possibilities. What some see as bent and broken, throwaways are actually amazing things waiting to be made into something new, something unexpected, something surprising. We all looked puzzled. All right, class, get your coats. We're taking a walk to the Melvin Beach junkyard right now, she exclaimed. So there they go. They're walking down to the junkyard. Their teacher's going to show them just what is in a junkyard so that to really open up their eyes so that they can see it's important. They need to feel better about themselves and really see their true value. At the junkyard, Mrs. Peterson stopped us. Now, form into your tribes. Remember, they're tribes from vanilla. <laughs> everything, actually I smell like coconut today. <laughs> then collect everything that you think you could be, could be made into something new. Remember, wanderers, here's your chance. Forget what the object was. Imagine what it could be. Each of the tribes set off across the junkyard, collecting wheels, doors, handles, latches. We vanillas hadn't gotten just the right junk, though, until almost at the end of our visit. As Jody, um, Raven, Tom, and I were climbing over our last pile of assorted junk, Gibby called to us. He was standing under a shed roof looking up. There, hanging from the roof strut, was an old, wrecked mobile airplane. Gib, that's just an old, torn up plane, Tom said, turning to leave. No, Gibby said, it's a beauty. I see it. We are going to rebuild it into something bigger, better, something wonderful, something that will de defy gravity itself. This plane is going to fly all the way up to the moon. There was much wonder in his eyes that we knew we had just what we needed. How exciting. Have you, any of you guys ever been to a junkyard? And seen all the possibilities and all the cool things that are there? Remember how PTA one time had that meeting where they had brought in a bunch of things and you got to take those things and make it some, into something new, like a piece of art? Um, that was a lot of fun. And so that's what you can do too at Junkyard. There are artists, famous artists, uh, I'm sure Ms. Humphreys could tell us about exactly who, where they collect all kinds of things and then they make it into something new. I was watching um, the Disney Channel the other day for kids and there was an artist that took all of these things that they found on the beach and then they had created it into an aerial. Isn't that cool, the character Ariel? And it looked just like it, but all of the pieces were like bottle tops and the tops of like the, um, the soda um, containers um, that are really bad for like sea turtles and stuff. They get stuck in it. But they took all of the pieces that they had found and they put it together and they made this beautiful sculpture. And so that's what the teacher's trying to get them to understand is their beauty and how unique and important it is to be different. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. So from the next few weeks, during the last hour of our class time, we worked on our new inventions. As we hammered and sawed and cut, Mrs. Peterson read to us Great Expectations by David Copperfield, and sometimes poetry. But every day, Mrs. Peterson reminded us, 
Some people look at things the way they are and cry. Why? Because I want you to look at things and see what they could be and ask, why not? Gibby was the boss of our plane project. We removed all of the outer skin, built in new balsa struts, and repaired a lot of the skeleton. Raven placed the old skin with pure silk. Finally, we painted the rebuilt plane with low resistance lacquer. But would it fly? All right, boys and girls, and that is where I'm going to stop because Mr. Hennen will be coming on in just one minute to start his new chapter, but we will continue our book on Monday. And I want you to be thinking in the meantime, what are they going to do to take this plane that they rebuilt and made beautiful again, and what do they need to do to make it fly? All right, I'll see you later. Have a great week.